Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the council meeting. The Local Government Act 2020, the Act, Section 25, states the election of the Mayor must be chaired by the Chief Executive Officer. Part B, Section 4 of the Governance Rules, state that the Chief Ex Executive Officer must facilitate the election of the Mayor in accordance with the provisions of the Act. The Chief Executive Officer must open the meeting at which the Mayor is to be elected and invite nominations for the Office of Mayor. Once the Mayor has been elected, they will assume position of Chair. As the meeting chair, I give my, my consent for this open council meeting to be streamed live, recorded and published online in accordance with council's live streaming policy and meeting procedure, local law 2018. The chair and or the CEO have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Attendees are advised that they may be subject to legal action if their actions result in inappropriate and or unacceptable behaviour and or comments. Thank you. The COVID-19 Omnibus Bill 2020 provision allows council meeting attendance by electronic means. The requirement of the meeting being open to the public is satisfied by the meeting being streamed live to council's internet. In the event of technical issues, with the live stream, the meeting will be adjourned. Council, councillors are deemed as being in attendance if they can hear proceedings, they can see other members in attendance and can be seen by other members, and they can be heard to speak. Please turn off all mobile telephones or in the case of an emergency, please advise the chair and switch to silent mode. I now invite Councillor Brooks to provide the statement of acknowledgement. Thank you, Ms. Westy. First Coast Shire Council acknowledges Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people as the first Australians and recognise that they have a unique relationship with the land and water. Council further recognises that we are situated on the lands of the traditional owners the Bunurong, Bunurong members of the Kulin Nation who have lived here for thousands of years. We offer our respect to the elders past and present and through them, all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, wherever they are. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. I now invite Councillor Lesseur to provide the Councillor's statement. Uh, thank you, Ms. Swasey. All members of the council pledge to Bass Coast Shire community to consider every item listed on this agenda based on, an, on the individual merits of each item without bias or prejudice by maintaining an open mind and disregarding councillors personal interests so as to avoid any uh, conflict with public duty. Any councillor having a conflict of interest in any item will make a proper prior disclosure to the meeting and will not participate in the debate or vote on an issue. Thank you, Councillor Lesserve. I can confirm we have received no apologies from councillors today and we have all councillors present at the meeting. I can also confirm that we have received no declarations of interest. I'd like to now move to the confirmation of the minutes. And uh, I would like uh, that the minutes of the ordinary meeting held on the 21st of October 2020 be confirmed. Can I please request a councillor to move the motion and then a councillor to second it. Councillor Bruce Kent, moving. 
Councillor Michael Whelan to second. And I put it to the vote. All those in favour? Uh, Councillor Rooks, Councillor Kent, Councillor Tassari, Councillor Lesur, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Lane, Councillor Bower, Councillor Whelan, and Councillor Lark. I, uh, the confirmation of minutes has been carried. Thank you. I'd now like to move to public question time. Uh, for this, as the chair, I will read out the questions and the relevant general manager will respond uh, to the questions. This is the only opportunity that members of the public have uh, to put questions to council. Um, unless otherwise approved by the mayor, no other opportunities will be given to the public to discuss agenda items with the, with the council. So uh, question one from Len Vandenwood, uh, signage at community gardens. As a community garden member, my question is to why we can't have signs from sponsors at our garden when every other community group using council land can receive funds from sponsorship who then advertise their businesses, for example, local football clubs. I now ask Mr. Phil Malter to respond to the question. Any signage must be considered within council delegations and regulations. As this request relates to a space delegated to the Coronet Bay Community Asset Committee, any request must come from the committee. Once a request has been lodged by the committee, council officers will work with them and the community garden. Council looks forward to receiving the request from the committee. Thank you, Mr. Phil Malta. The second question is from Mr. Brendan Webb, and the topic is New Haven State Park. If there is still government money for this project, will this project be rebudgeted? And is the voted on location still Graydon's Reserve, New Haven? I ask Ms. Kennedy to respond to this question. In response to question one, the regional state and place-based project was deferred by council in the 2019-20 financial year and $200,000 from this project to council during the COVID-19 response and recovery. The overall project budget was at 1.5 million, which included 650,000 for a successful state government grant for Sports and Recreation Victoria. The original funding agreement outlined council to have completed the project by May 2021. Due to the issues faced in 2020, council has requested an extension to the state funding and is still awaiting the outcome of this request. Once the outcome of this request is known, Council will provide an update to the community. In response to question two, Council confirmed Graydon's reserve as the preferred location at the December 2019 Council meeting and following initial, initial community consultations in early 2020, are aware of challenges associated with delivering the project at this point. Upon a decision on the extension to the funding of the State Government, Council will re-engage with the community-led project steering committee to determine how the project can be best progressed. A final decision on the project, including its location, will then be presented to Council for a decision. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Questions three, four, and five will be read out consecutively by me as they relate to the potential installation of a wind turbine at Surf Beach. Once the questions have been read out, a response to all questions will be provided by Mr. James Sturton. From Ray Carson. Now that council has had adequate feedback from the state government and seen what other councils have done, e.g. Port Phillip Council, are you now prepared to initiate a plan to stop construction of the proposed wind turbine at Surf Beach? Question two from Ray. What is council prepared to do in preventing future construction of wind turbines in Phillip Island? And will council change loopholes in construction of these turbines? Question four is from Kay Carson. What is council doing to stop construction of a wind turbine in Surf Beach from going ahead? 
and in the future having a change to ruling stating that they are not permitted in a residential backyard. Question five comes from Kay Monair. Would council please inform residents of the details of the legal advice they have been given in relation to stocking construction of the turbine? Will council take responsibility for the decrease in values that according to real estate agents could occur and compensate homeowners who lose money as a result of the turbine? Question six, come back, and that's the final uh, questions, three, four, and five. I now ask Mr. James Sturton to provide a response to those questions. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Wafty. Council acknowledges that a wind turbine is not a good outcome in a residential setting. Council has sought legal advice available to us through current planning and building legislation and our own local law to cease construction of this turbine. This is including having this information peer reviewed and cross checked. A comprehensive, frequently asked questions document regarding Council's advocacy and work to try and intervene in this matter to prohibit the installation of the wind turbine is available on our website. Council is currently undertaking a review of our local law. Our new local law is planned to include how Council manages domestic wind turbines. This work is due to be completed in the 2021-2022 financial year and will be formally endorsed by Council. Some Councils, including the City of Port Phillip, have included rules within their planning schemes to prohibit domestic wind turbines. A formal amendment of the planning scheme is required in this case. Council has written to the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning, who have replied that a change of the planning scheme in this instance is not supported. Any amendment to the planning scheme would involve a process that could take up to approximately two years and will require budget allocation from Council. If this wind turbine were to be constructed and is found to contravene any planning, building or public health or nuisance requirements, then Council would undertake appropriate enforcement on this matter. Thank you, Ms Wasty. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. The final question is from Kevin Griffin, and the topic is one Feggy Guide Park. Will Council now provide to the community full and complete details, including project plans, designs, timelines, and costings for the $1.15 million one Feggy Guide Park Capital Works project that was announced as part of the 2021 adopted budget? I now invite Mr. Phil Malter to provide the response or Ms. Kennedy. Ms. Kennedy, thank you. Council officers completed an intensive consultation program to develop the Monsaggy Guide Park Redevelopment Project. The final pre tender details are currently being completed, with the tender process expected to be commenced in early 2021, and the project commencement expected in mid 2021. Through the tender stage, project planning, including final designs, timelines, and costings will be available. This project has been part funded through a successful grant to Sports and Recreation Victoria for $700,000, with details provided on Council's website. Um, and so um, people can get an update from our website. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. And I thought that was the end of question time, but no, uh, we have one more from Kevin Griffin. Uh, and this is with regard to Inverloch Surf Parade. In September, Council advised that officers were responding to the Department of Land, Water and Planning's request for additional information. Will Council provide to the community the details as to what additional information was requested, the date on which Council officers provided their response, and on what date DELP is expected to approve the application? Ms. Kennedy for response, thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Westby. Um, the planning permit amendment was submitted by officers in April and is now being considered by the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning. In August, the department made a request for additional information in relation to current rates of erosion and demonstration that council has considered all avoid and minimise options. Officers are, current, officers are currently finalising our response. DELP will then consider this information. However, we cannot advise on the DELP involved to make a decision regarding our application. Thank you, Ms. West. Thank you, 
Ms. Kennedy. And that concludes public question time. Uh, now move to petitions, joint letters, deputations, and correspondence, and can confirm that we have received no petitions, joint letters, deputations, or correspondence. Uh, there are no notices of motions uh, for today's council meeting. And I now invite councillors to provide a brief councillor report. And we will start with Bunurong ward councillors. And if I could invite councillor Council Letitia Lang. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. Uh, thus far, I have attended a Remembrance Day ceremony at the Wontaggi Cenotaph. About uh, three council briefings, met residents, spoke on the phone with residents, as well as via email. And I have um, been really impressed with the work of council staff so far um, to ensure that I've been prepared. Uh, today, I also attended the online launch for 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence. And today also marks the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. Uh, I just wanted to mention briefly uh, with regard to council, um, I just wanted to um, say that without the support of a great deal of really inspiring people in our community, there's no way I would be here talking to you all. And um, so thank you to every single person who's helped me and my family and friends. Um, and I'll continue to be committed to uh, listening and learning with the ultimate goal to address the needs of a dramatically growing community in the face of impacts of climate change and lower infrastructure in, uh, um, in investment in the centre. Anyway, um, regional centre. But I'd also like to recognise that I'm really excited to work with the other councillors so far. It's been fantastic. Um, and I look forward to working with you all um, in the next four years. And I think it's a, an inspiring group of people. Um, and I think that we all bring a lot to the table to represent the needs of our community. Thank you, Councillor Lane. Councillor Lark. Thank you, Ms. Wasty. Um, my name is Les Lark and it's a huge privilege and an honour and great responsibility to take on a second term as a councillor for Basco Shire. And I will do it with everything I have to the best of my ability. I'd like to thank former councillor Julian Brown for his service over the past four years and for the very civilised and decent way he portrayed himself, a sense of discipline, a sense of professionalism and compassion. And I thank him for that. And we must never forget his contribution. I would also like to thank my son and grandson, my children's partners, and the strong women in my life for their unwavering love and care. My mother, sister, wife, and mother-in-law, my two daughters and three granddaughters. We still have much to do post-COVID, and as a priority, we need to work urgently to help address domestic, family, and gender-based violence and mental health issues that are impacting our community from young people to our seniors. That said, I have a sense of optimism about this council and the future of our community and believe our best days lie ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Councillor Brett Tassari, I now invite you. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Wasty. First of all, I'd like to uh, start off by congratulating all the councillors, both uh, returned and also new. Um, I, like Councillor Lark, uh, very much buoyed by what we have, uh, I, I guess, been through so far in the first couple of weeks, and I'm really looking forward to working closely with uh, the other eight councillors for the next uh, four years. I'd like to thank the community for the overwhelming support that I received during the elections not only um, during the, the actual votes, but also leading up to the votes. Um, both my family and myself received a lot of support and I uh, truly am thankful for all that. And I'd also like to acknowledge that I'm wearing orange today. Um, and that is in recognition of the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. And it's something that I encourage everybody to uh, 
jump on board with. It's a great initiative and um, it's really inspiring to uh, to see everybody take part. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tassari. I'd now like to invite from the Island Ward, Councillor Ron Bauer. Thank you, Ms. Wasty. Uh, I'd also like to say, uh, acknowledge what Bre uh, Councillor Betrisari just said. The orange cap is for the 60 days of activism. To my fellow councillors and the Bass Coast Shire community, I would firstly like to thank Ms. Ellie Wasty and her team for making me so welcome as a new councillor. There's been a lot to learn and become familiar with, especially the technology. I feel I've been attending boot camp with all the seminars we've had to attend and to get up to speed in our roles. I've also been overwhelmed by the support that I've received from the council staff in learning who's who in the zoo and who, and I would especially like to thank Ms. Kelly Mayle from Council of Support for her patience with me. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank my fellow councillors, both re-elected and the newbies for the spirit of cooperation that we've have all shown each towards each other at this time. I think the path forward is looking very good for our Shire. My first official duty as a council was to lay the wreath at the RSL on Remembrance Day uh, in Cows. To my Island Ward community, I would like to say that the issues that I ran with in, in my campaign have been acknowledged by all councillors and we are addressing them in a collaborative spirit. To that end, the matter of the Red Bin weekly collection regrettably cannot be resolved for this summer. All councillors were given a briefing on this issue by Best Coast officers. And as you can imagine, the concern is far more complex than just rolling up with a truck to collect the bin. This issue will be looked again early next year, and it is my fervent hope it will have, it'll be resolved by summer 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bauer. Councillor David Brooks. Thank you, Ms. Wasty. It's been 16 days since uh, I took the oath of office with the other eight councillors here, and it's, so far it's been a positive ex experience, so thank you. Thank you to uh, Ms. Wasty and her executive team for their support over that time. There has been lots of learning, similar to Councillor Bauer, uh, not in the IT department, but uh, we've had training in various areas, governance, planning, and even how to run uh, online meetings and workshops better, which has been fantastic. I've had one-on-one uh, -on -one with Ms. Wasty, similar to the other councillors, and I've also met up with previous councillors to get some good advice on how to be a good councillor. We've had get to know your time with the executive team and the other councillors, and that's been very worthwhile, knowing that we have to spend four years together working well as a team. I've spent a bit of time with uh, my island ward councillors, Councillor Bauer and Willen, and identifying who's gonna take lead roles on various issues or community groups. Um, for example, I'm pleased to say that I'm gonna be involved with the tourism events and business focuses on Phillip Island or the island ward. To that end, I've um, been to the Phillip Island Business Network Committee meeting and introduced myself along with Mr. Uh, Councillor Whelan and I'll be going to the Destination of Phillip Island dinner um, or dinner very soon. We've also had a number of briefings which have been very informative, so thank you for those on community grants, outdoor dining, red bin collections, and of course the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, hence my orange shirt. I'm still representing the community, being on two committees, being the Tennis Club and Phillip Island Landcare Group. Uh, I'd like to thank the community so far for contacting me, um, but mostly by email on various issues. And I know we're following up with staff, uh, with the support of staff and getting back to you on those issues. With regards to my main priorities, um, I'm be working hard and working out how best to achieve uh, the network of pedestrian and cycling paths throughout the whole of our Shire. And I'm looking forward to working on the distinctive area landscape project or legislation that's coming through and being part of our council and how it's gonna help us define our town boundaries, hopefully forever. Finally, wherever you go, you have lots of discussions with people, no matter where you go, the shopping center, the tennis club. And um, last night, 
one of my fellow tennis players, he was saying, he said, good on me for standing up. And I hope we get more positive feedback like that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brooks. Now to Western Port Ward. I would like to invite Councillor Rochelle Hossett. Thank you, Ms. Wasty. <laughs> Did we get Councillor Whelan in there? No, he got thrown out the door. <laughs> I only get one shot at this and I'm not doing a very good job, am I? I'll step Whelan, back and let Councillor Whelan. Going through my script far too fast. I do apologise. You didn't get the email from the VEC, obviously. Um, I'd like to uh, acknowledge my the retiring councillors from the island ward, um, Steve Fullett and Pamela Rothfield, acknowledge the great job they did and how I enjoyed that team and welcome my new colleagues, Ronnie Bauer and David Brooks. And I think we're already starting to work well together, as David indicated. Um, so I'm a bit surprised, however, that Steve has fallen off the uh, off his job so early because Claire's phone hasn't gone off yet. But anyway, um, one of the things we're doing as a team is starting to, you know, is, is making those contacts with the community groups and really to say, urge them to be activated towards the council plan and the economic development strategy we need to do this year. Um, if I receive the endorsement of my fellow councils, I'd like to continue the work on the Southeast Council's Climate Change Alliance. We've done some great work there and we're absolutely heartened by the affordable housing announcements of the government this week, more particularly the seven star ratings that they're acquiring for those houses. We've been working on, a, on an issue to try and have the national building regulations reflect um, climate change imperatives. And I look forward to continuing that work with SECA if, uh, if that's how it works out. Similarly, we've got the distinctive areas landscapes with uh, Councillor Rooks referred to, uh, a seminal bit of work for the island and for Bass Coast as a whole, and we need to be right across that. I plan to be over that like a rash. And, and finally, but certainly not least, uh, to continue the work that we commenced in the last term on climate, the climate emergency, and to drive that action plan into uh, into the detail it needs to be in, and also to, to uh, look over the uh, implementation of that and endorse the comments of uh, Councillor Rooks in relation to shared pathways. I think that is going to be something that will be uppermost in my mind in this term and something that uh, well, I think the three of us, the Island Ward, and I'm sure it's supported, echoed by everyone in the, in the council towards uh, really getting on with pathways, linking up those footpaths that need to be linked up, but also those shared pathways. And we can get it, be serious about active transport. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Willen. And my apologies once again, but I will go again. Michelle Holstead from Western Port Ward. Thanks, Ms. Wasty. Um, I'd like to start my first report by recognising that we're situated on the traditional lands of the Bunurong and Bunurong, members of the Cullen Nation who have lived here for thousands of years. I offer my respect to their elders past and present, and through them all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Running for local government's difficult at the best of times, but to have run a campaign under the restrictions of COVID-19 and to have been successful was extra special. And I thank the community of Western Port Ward for putting their faith and trust in me to represent them in this place. I'd also like to thank my family, my husband, Tony, my children, Stacey, Lauren, Mitchell, Jasmine and Brighton for their love and support. And may I also acknowledge the work of Councillor Jeff Ellis and thank him for his service to the Bass Coast community over the past four years. I wish him well in his new role and look forward to working with him over the months ahead. The first month's been a, been a time of getting to know my fellow councillors and the administrative team of Bass Coast under the difficult restraints placed on us all by COVID-19. This has included the traditions of the declaration of polls and taking the oath of, at very low key ceremonies that seemed strange with wearing of masks and the limited numbers able to attend. Uh, I too had my first uh, representation being at the Remembrance Day for San Remo in the laying of a wreath and felt really humbled to be a part of that. 
It's been a pleasure to meet with community members. And last week I met with a well-known local historian by the name of Ian Hitchings, who was kind enough to show me his voluntary work in restoring local items of significance at his home in Fuller Road, Wonthaggy North. Ian's a lifetime resident of the Bass Coast community and shared with me his childhood memories, pointing out local locations of significance in the Western Port Ward. Thank you, Ian. I look forward to the day you can open up your farm to the community. He'll be amazed at what you have achieved. I would like to offer thanks to the Bass Coast Shire Administration under the direction of our CEO, Ali Wastey, who has shown tremendous support and guidance as we settle in for the years ahead. I appreciate the time council officers have put into the many briefings of councillors, especially the newly elected councillors who have appreciated being brought up to speed with the introduction of programs such as the outdoor dining for COVID-19 amongst many housekeeping sessions. Already my calendar is filling fast with community group meetings and I'm full of enthusiasm to meet and work with group members to achieve outcomes they seek for the enjoyment of the whole of the Bass Coast community. I'm very much looking forward to working with residents, community groups, fellow councillors, the CEO, the executive team and the administration for Bass Coast to ensure good governance, transparency and the best outcomes possible for the community of Bass Coast who deserve nothing less from their council. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Holstead. I now invite Councillor Bruce Kent. Thank you, Ms. Wasty. Um, my words today will just be words of thanks. Um, first of all, a word for the last council. Uh, many thanks to Jeff Ellis, Julian Brown, Steve Fullerton, and Pan Rothfield for their friendship and strong contribution over a great team building experience. I will miss that interaction. Thank you to the Western Port community for the show of support in my re-election too. And also I'd like to thank the many ratepayer, business and community groups from across the Shire for their support. Congratulations to all of the councillors. I really do look forward to working with all of you and experiencing your independent views as you represent the thoughts and needs of our community. Looking forward to the next four years. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kent. I now invite Councillor Clint Anderson to say a few words. Uh, thank you, Miss Wasty. Uh, I, like other councillors, I would endorse um, all the they've said today about the administration and certainly about um, the respect for women and uh, uh, lobby against violence against women. Uh, I would like to say that Councillor Kent and myself laid the wreath at Grant Pool for the Friends of the Bass RSL, and um, that was a, a privilege to do that as a part of my duties as a councillor. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the, uh, the community for their ongoing support, um, for myself and the Western Port team. Um, a welcome to the new and returned councillors. Um, I look forward to working with you all. I would like to acknowledge the hard work also um, for the outgoing councillors of um, for the past term, councillor who Jim Ellis, uh, Julian Brown, and retired councillors Pam Rothfield and Steve Fullerton. A, a job well done. I think the last term of council we did do a, a good job. But there's still much to do. Um, we as a newly elected council need to get on with it. Um, the community has raised many issues and uh, we need to work closely with them. We declared a climate change emergency and we need to act now. We need to continue to develop strong partnerships and advocacy and to support the return of business in Bass Coast. I'd just like to finally say thank you to my family and friends uh, for their ongoing support. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Lesserve. I'd now like to move to the reports requiring council decision. And the first item, H1, determination of the period of office for Mayor and Deputy Mayor. Mr Filmalter will introduce the report. Thank you, Ms Wasty. 
The purpose of this report is to set the mayoral and deputy mayoral terms. The report recommends that council set a term of one year. Thank you, that council has the ability to set a two year term should we to do so. Thank you, Ms. Wade. Thank you, Mr. Phil Malta. I would now like to ask a councillor to move the report and I'll need a seconder as well. Councillor Bauer and a seconder, Councillor Lasseur. Councillor Bauer, would you like to speak yes. to the report? Uh, I'll just say that I, I think a one year term is appropriate. And uh, I think that uh, we've discussed this in our, what I say, the uh, councillor only sessions. And I think it's appropriate. And I'm very happy to move this. Thank you. Councillor Lasseur, did you wish uh, to add anything? No, nothing further to add. Thanks, Ms. Wasty. Okay. I'll um, uh, now like to councillors could show us show us show of hands for support of this motion. All right, Councillor Tassari, Councillor Rooks, Councillor Kent, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Lasseur, Councillor Whelan, Councillor Bauer, Councillor Lang, Councillor Lark. I now uh, confirm this report as carried. Thank you. Now I'd like to move to H2, the election of the mayor. And Ms. Mr. Phil Malta will also introduce this report. Thank you, Ms. Swayze. The, the purpose of this report is to call for nominations for the election of the mayor and if required, undertake the election process. Thank you, Ms. Swayze. Thank you. I have received two nominations for the appointment of mayor. Nomination one, Councillor Rolf and Councillor Rochelle Holstead uh, nominates Councillor Bruce Kent and Councillor Claire Lesseur has seconded the nomination. Nomination two, Councillor Leticia Lang nominates Councillor Brett Tassari and Councillor Ron Bauer has seconded the nomination. I now put the matter to the vote. Councillors, please vote for one of the candidates via a show of hands. All those in favour of Councillor Kent. Councillor Lark, Councillor Lesserve, Councillor Kent, Councillor Holstead. All of those in favour of Councillor Tassari. Please show a show of hands. Councillor Rooks, Councillor Tassari, Councillor Lang, Councillor Bauer, Councillor Whelan. There is an absolute majority for Councillor Tassari with five votes. Therefore, Councillor Tassari is declared elected as mayor. Councillor Tassari, you may now assume the position as chair. Congratulations, Councillor Tassari. Um, uh, Ms. Wastey, am I allowed to just quickly uh, say something? Yes, I'll allow it. Thank you. Firstly, thank you. Um, thank you. Firstly, I'd just like to thank the, the councillors for the confidence uh, for me to uh, continue on in a role that I, I really do enjoy doing it. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Councillor Kent. Um, on his uh, on on putting his self forward for the role, and uh, I uh, look forward I look forward to working with Councillor Kent again uh, for another four years. We work very well together, um, and I admire his uh, his his desire for for this for this role. And I'm sure he will be a uh, a very good mayor um, in time to come. Uh, thank you to everybody, and I, I look forward to working with this uh, this council for the next four years. Thanks, Ms. Wasty. Thank you, Mayor. Now, uh, as the Mayor, you will now assume the Chair Responsibilities, uh, which is H3, election of the Deputy Mayor.
Okay. Okay. Thank and you. And just uh, so you can actually break, let me ask David to Mr. Phil Walter to introduce the report. Thank you, Ms. Wasty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and congratulations on your appointment. The purpose of this report is to call for nominations for the election of the Deputy Mayor and, if required, to take the election process. Thank you, Mr. Phil Malta. Uh, we have received one nomination uh, for the appointment of Deputy Mayor. Uh, the nomination received is by Councillor David Rooks to nominate Councillor Michael Whelan and has been seconded by Councillor Letitia Lang. Um, and as there is no further nominations, I declare Councillor Michael Whelan as the elected Deputy Mayor. Congratulations, Councillor Whelan. Yep. Councillor Whelan, would you like to say a couple of words? Uh, yeah, just very quickly. Look, I, thanks very much to my fellow councillors for, uh, for endorsing me in this role. And I look forward to working with you Councillor Cesari and supporting you in your, in your role as mayor that you've been exemplary in in the last two years. And I know you have uh, big plans in relation to some of those groups that we're members of in terms of uh, the influence of Bass Coast. And I look forward to supporting that and also covering your absences when those things occur. Um, the, the reason for seeking this position from my point of view is there are a couple of very significant whole of municipality issues that we need to be across. I mentioned them in my councillor report. The distinctive areas landscapes is, is one of those. It's, uh, as I said, a seminal piece of work for Bass Coast uh, and also, of course, continuing to work on the climate emergency and, uh, and, and the, the issues that fall out of it. That'll be enough for now. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. That brings us to item number H4, determination of allowances for mayor and councillors. And to present uh, this uh, report, Mr. Phil Malta, again. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is to set the mayor and councillor allowances and commence the public consultation process pursuant to section 74.1 of the 1989 Local Governance Act. The state government has specified the mayor and council announced categories with Bass Coast Council, listed as a category two council. The proposed announces have been frozen at the level set in the preceding year, 2019. Until the public consultation is concluded, it is appropriate to set allowances at the maximum level within that category. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Kilmalter. Can I have a councillor move and second this recommendation as it reads? Councillor Whelan and seconded. Councillor Lasserve. Councillor Whelan, would you like to speak to the report? Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, I, I think this is a, this is a, a rate that's set uh, by, by uh, the government, or at least set centrally. Um, and I want to say that the work that councillors and the mayor in particular do is well beyond the pale. And this, this is not remuneration in that sense. It's, a, it's regarded as an allowance. It's, it's, um, it, it's not a big allowance, but every cent of it is more than earned many times over. Um, in turn, just, just the demands on your time. Uh, so I commend it. I think it's, it, it should be accepted as is. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Councillor LaServe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I uh, endorse the recommendation and consider that uh, just on past experience, the amount of work and commitment that councillors make, it's um, a fair allowance. Thank you, thank you Councillor LaServe. Would anyone else like to speak to the or against the recommendation? No. Councillor Whelan, would you like to close or put it to a vote? I just put it to a vote. Thank you. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillor Tassari, Holstead, Lang, Rooks, Laserve, Bower, Kent, Whelan and Lark. Carried. Item number H5, recording of the oath of affirmation of the office by councillors and to be presented by Mr Phil Malta, who has a starring role today. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is to record the taking of the oath or affirmation of office by councillors elect on Monday, 9 October 2020. The detailed date of oaths or affirmations are attached and have been executed by the CEO and each councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Filmalter. Can I have somebody move and second Councillor Holstead and seconded Councillor Bauer? Councillor Holstead, would you like to speak to the recommendation? Sorry, I did a councillor lark. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I don't need to speak to the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Halstead. Councillor Bauer. Uh, it's a procedural motion, and uh, I, I'm happy to put it forward as is. Nothing else. No, that comment. Yeah, Councillor Bauer, we'll put it to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillor Tassari, Halstead, Lang, Rooks, Laserve, Bauer, Kent, Whelan and Lark. Carried. Item number H6, appointment of councils, committees and external committees to be presented by Mr. Phil Malta. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is to recommend council appointments to two council committees and one external committee. A report with further nominations for other council committees will be presented at a future date. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Filmalter. Can we have somebody move and second the recommendation? Um, I guess I best read the uh, the recommendation as it is for the viewers that are, are watching. So the recommendation is for the audit and risk committee is the mayor and councillor Whelan. For the CEO employment matters committee is the mayor and councillor Lasserve. And I might just add that that can be altered, I think, on review uh, later on or next year, early next year. And the West Gippsland Library Corporation Board is Councillor Lang with uh, still to be named a substitute. So can I have somebody move and second those recommendations? Councillor Rooks, you got there first, just ahead of Councillor Lang. So Councillor Rooks, would you like to speak to the recommendation? I only to say congratulations to those people for um, supporting us by uh, being on those committees. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Lang? Um, just to say that I um, congratulate those um, who are going on the Audit and Risk Committee and the CEO Employment Matters Committee. And I look forward to meeting and working with uh, the other members of the West Gippsland Regional Library Corporation Board as it undergoes um, some exciting new changes. Thank you, Councillor Lang. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the recommendations? No? Councillor Rooks, would you like to close or put it to a vote? Put it to a vote. Thank you. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillor Tassari, Holstead, Lang, Rooks, Laserve, Bauer, Kent, Whelan and Lark. Carried. Okay, that brings us to statutory reports. So I request a councillor move and second the motion that the agenda items I1 and I2 be considered as a block. Can I have somebody move? Councillor Whelan, seconded Councillor Kent. All in favour? Councillor Tassari, Holstead, Lang, Rooks, Laserve, Bauer, Kent, Whelan and Lark. Carried. Ask if uh, any councillor would like to discuss any of those reports. Yes, Councillor Laserve. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, could I have uh, a report or um, an update on the application for the Western Port is 190219? The subdivision of land, 29 lots, and removal of vegetation on uh, Lot and uh, Bonwith Avenue, San Remo Place. Okay, thank you, Councillor Serve. Have we got somebody in planning that might be able to give Councillor Serve an update on that report? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I can um, provide a brief update. So that um, was an amended development plan to the original subdivision plan, which uh, I believe was approved in about 2014. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Sturton. 
Anybody else like to discuss any of the reports? No? Okay. Um, request the councillor move and second that the recommendation attached in the agenda items I1 and I2 be adopted. Councillor Whelan and Councillor Kent. All in favour? Councillor Tassari, Holstead, Lang, Rooks, Serve, Bower, Kent, Whelan and Lark. Carried. Okay, I now brings us to item number J or item letter number letter J, urgent business. Uh, is there any urgent business? Councillor Holstead. Your microphone, Councillor Holstead. <laughs> Councillor Lark. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm giving him a run for his money. Um, through you, Mr Mayor, do I read the notice of motion that I'd like to put as urgent business at this point? No, just the title, if I could. Thanks, Councillor Holstead. Okay, why, this is... Why, it's urgent, why you feel it's urgent. Uh, I'd like Council to consider um, taking this in as urgent business um, for the protection of grass trees at the Grantville Sand Quarry. Um, they currently have been removed and bagged and are not looking very healthy at all. In, in fact, um, they are almost dead. Um, I think we need to move very quickly to try and save them. And I have a notice of motion that might be able to do that. Thank you. Councillor Holstead. Do we need... Sorry, do we need a seconder? Or yes, can somebody? Could I have somebody second that? No, okay, we've got hands flying everywhere. So, Councillor Laserve, I saw you first. So, Councillor uh, Holstead, if you could speak to why this is urgent and why it is urgent only to be added into the agenda at this stage, and not actually what the item is. Ah, uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's urgent because the grass trees won't wait three weeks um, for us to bring this to the next council meeting. And um, it is going to require uh, urgent attention by council in order to try and save these um, grass trees. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Councillor Lasserve, again, if we could just stick to the classification of why it's urgent business. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I believe it's urgent business because uh, work is proceeding and um, these trees are, are very vulnerable and need to have action right now. Thank you, Councillor Lasserve. Would anyone else like to speak to the debate of why this is urgent only? Councillor Bower. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I believe this is urgent business. Firstly, under uh, where was it, uh, 20 .2. It cannot safely or conveniently be deferred until the next council meeting. The reason being, I don't think the trees will live that long. So it's for the safety of the trees. Uh, and uh, the, the, I think this uh, makes it important to be under urgent business. Thank you, Councillor Bauer. Would anyone else like to, Councillor Lang? Just to add um, as to why it potentially may not have been included in the agenda before Friday, uh, I received notice of um, this from residents in the community since the final agenda was released. And so it did, I think, lead to the matter being included as urgent business. Thank you, Councillor Lang. Would anyone else like to speak to the basis of this being urgent business? No. Councillor Holstead, would you like to close or put it to a vote? I'll just put it to a vote. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Just a reminder that this is a vote to, to accept this as urgent business and include it into the agenda. All in favour of? Councillor Tassari, Holstead, Lang, Brooks, Laserve, Bower, Kent, Whelan and Lark. That is carried. And this is now a item on the agenda. So I now will need Councillor Holstead. 
to move her notice of motion. Would you uh, like yes, to thank you. Summarise your notice of motion at this point before we get a seconder and then speak to Councillor Holstead. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that Council act as a matter of urgency to ensure the grass trees removed at Grantville Sand Quarry site are handled and cared for in an appropriate manner to ensure they are kept healthy and able to be replanted at the earliest possible time. Number two, that Council seek to have on record the details of the rehabilitation bond and work plan held and monitored by the Earth Resources Regulator for the Grantville Sand Quarry and, as and assess whether the work order appropriately protects our region's distinctive native vegetation and endangered flora that Council seek to include as part of the review any presence of endangered populations of wildlife. Uh, three, the Earth Resources Regulator confirm the rehabilitation bond being held for the Grantville Sand Quarry is sufficient to ensure full rehabilitation of the site. Four, request that rehabilitation work to any used and closed sections of the site begin immediately. Five, Council establish through the relevant Victorian State Government Authority what assessments for any Aboriginal or cultural heritage values of the Grantville Sand Quarry site have been undertaken to date and to liaise with the Bonorong Land Council to discuss the significance of the site and what further action is required. And six, Council seeks to confirm with the Victorian State Government that the ERR has demonstrated that it can effectively discharge its regulatory functions by appropriately balancing its commitment to the Minister for Resources under Statements of Expectations 2018 to 20 and the Commissioner for Better Regulations getting the groundwork right to reduce the regulatory burden on operators by facilitating and streamlining approval and regulatory processes giving effect to the objective of the Act to ensure that risks posed to the environment are identified and eliminated or minimised as set out in the Auditor General's inquiry into the determination and administration of rehabilitation of bonds for the mining in the state. Thank okay. you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, Councillor Holstead, I've just got taken aside for a minute. Can you repeat all that? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not serious. Um, so, Governance has just put your motion on screen, so it's there for us to read. Can I have somebody second that notice of motion? Councillor LaServe. And now, Councillor Holstead, I hope you've had a, a drink of water because now you can speak to your notice of motion. Uh -huh. Thank you, and thank you for the support of Council on this urgent matter. Um, I guess uh, what I'd like to draw Council's attention to, as we're probably very aware, is the Natural Environment Strategy 2016 to 26 um, of Council's Na Natural Environment Strategy on page nine, where it talks about improving the health of the landscape through increased biodiversity and Indigenous vegetation protection. And I believe that this motion um, addresses that. It also is developing community partnerships or in that natural environment strategy, sorry, it also states um, we're developing community partnerships that promote awareness and that we will do this by building, developing and maintaining our stakeholder relationships and community partnerships that promote environmental awareness and value. Um, aside from the environmental value of this grass, of these grass trees, um, the financial value also is um, very high. And I'm sure councillors are probably aware of uh, the cost if you were to purchase in just one of these um, grass trees is quite significant, um, especially the ones that have two heads. They can be anywhere up to $750 for one plant. But that financial aspect aside, um, these plants take some 700 years to grow and that's what we're looking at um, with the plants that we're talking about now. Some of these have been there for 700 plus years and in one foul swoop we've seen them um, ripped out of their home 
and placed into bags and um, it doesn't seem that it has done, been done with much care. They're sitting out in the sun at um, the worst time possible for them to have been removed. It's suggested that the trees should um, really have been removed during autumn. It's a better time to have um, uprooted them, but it seems that, that that's been irrelevant in this case. Um, I'd also mention in our council plan, councillors, that we talk about the environment or well, the environment word is mentioned 26 times in our council plan. And I think we need to um, make a stand to say that um, these sorts of issues council will take Jeff, extremely anybody, seriously. I could ask you just to wrap it up as shortly, as quickly as possible. Yep, um, so I guess what I'm asking um, Council to do today is to send a very strong message that Council takes environmental devastation very um, seriously. And I think that this uh, motion is in line with our declaring of a climate change emergency. Um, and it's an attempt to, to save a very um, significant part of vegetation on the Bass Coast. Thanks, Thank Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Holt. And Councillor Lafayette. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I thank Councillor um, Holstead for her um, raising this as urgent business. We have had uh, this before us um, at other times. And I think it's critical that we act now, given that the movement of uh, these uh, trees is significant. And um, for those councillors that weren't aware, when we had fires go through that area in the Grandfall Reserve, Natural Reserve, Conservation Reserve, it's kind of triggered the flowering of these uh, grass trees. And it made the Grandfall grass tree forest very significant, something that uh, led by the, the people, that, um, the community group of Save the Holden Bushland group, their friends of that group that you know they've raised this issue with us a number of times and we haven't been able to have any movement on it but I can see that in this recommendation it's you know it's more than just a, a one approach it's about a partnership approach and I think it's a very valid point at this stage. Uh, excuse me, through, through you, Mr Mayor, we do have some images that were sent um, that we can show the um, what, a, what a grass tree forest should look like versus uh, um, what the current grass trees are looking like at the moment. And I believe one of the officers through you, Mr Mayor, may have that um, available to put up on the screen. I'm sorry, Councillor Holstead, I'm just looking at uh, governance at the moment and I'm not sure that that's something we can uh, we can do right now. Uh, we have technical issues going on and, and uh, apparently we can't do it right now. Councillor Holstead, apologies. Okay. Uh, so, Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my greatest concern is when you look at the six points, that points two to six are not going to happen overnight. They're, they're going to take a little bit of time and we've all dealt with the state government and it doesn't happen in 24 hours. The point one is we need to save those trees now. Otherwise, this location, the points two to six may be wasted because there won't be anything there to save. Points two to six for other areas in Bass Coast will be a great outcome. I think the council needs to talk to the owner of the site and hopefully convince him in community spirit to allow a, a group such as Landcare, who are the experts in saving these plants, uh, entry onto his property to take care of these plants. The local community is screaming, and I would suspect they're screaming for a group like this uh, to get there. It's quite evident that the owner of the sand mine doesn't have an idea how to cope for these plants. Once they're gone, they're gone. So hopefully the council officers can convince him to be open-minded and gain a little bit of community spirit and save these plants. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this uh, notice of motion? Oh, Councillor Whelan. 
Wink, yeah. There we go. Camp for, oh, there we go. We, we got the photos. We've got some audio. Yeah. To go, or some Pretty photos devastating. There um, was one of um of of a of the trees actually how they should look, which was just incredible. And this is just devastating to see what's happening here. Thank you. Okay. Um, it's firstly, yeah, thanks to Councillor Holstead for, for bringing this up as urgent business and uh, getting out of a sick bed to do so. So good effort. Um, look, I, I think I agree with what was Councillor Kent said, and I think is, is that this is not going to happen overnight and it hasn't been. Uh, Mrs Tobin, who's been keeping us up to date with this, or well, talking about this for, for months now, must be devastated to... Uh, to see what's uh, to what's happened, she's been forecasting that, and it's going to continue, and that's the problem. And we have this juxtaposition, this this paradox in our area, where, where we've got sand mining occurring, ripping the country apart, and shipping it up to Melbourne at, at the expense of all this native vegetation, pristine, beautiful vegetation. One of the things I thank Councillor Holstead for uh, including is stronger um, contact and liaison with the Bunurong Land Council, and and to really engage with them, they will be they will be shattered over this. Uh, but we need to be talking with them about where do we go from here into the future? How do how do we support them in their advocacy to the state government to try and get some common sense into this area? We're in a climate emergency, and we're pulling out native vegetation. This is perverse, it's a paradox, and we really need to come to grips with these things. And I acknowledge, and I, I hope I don't steal your thunder, Councillor Lark, but the, in discussions about this is, this is a burgeoning problem across our whole shire and also into South Gippsland. The transport implications going forward of this with thousands of B-dubs a day going along our Bass Coast Highway, carting sound to Melbourne, is going, we're a tourism area. You know, and, and, and as mentioned, we're a natural environment area. And this sort of activity is going on. It's just ripping the guts out of the country. Uh, and I think we need to have a serious look at it. And the government needs to have a serious look at it as well. While they're tearing down old buildings and taking them to landfill, tearing up pristine vegetation, taking the sand to build more buildings, they need to have a serious good look at it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this notice of motion? Councillor Lark. I'd, I'd just like to clarify that there hasn't been any breach of council's uh, work permit in in um, removing these uh, trees. Are we in a position to answer that? Uh, and I would suggest, is that Mr Sturton that I would ask uh, whether he can reply to that? Like, for, for example, we know there there is a work authority which comes under state government administration and a work permit that comes under our um, our control. I'm just trying to clarify. The, uh, I realise the state government authority is at, the work authority is outside our scope. I'm just trying to clarify whether or not uh, there's been any breach of uh, council's work permit as such. Mr. Sturton, up, Ms. Wasty. Oh, through the through the mayor, council doesn't issue the work permit, but I'll um, defer to Mr. Sturton if he wants to add any more information. Uh, thank you, Ms. Wasey. No, not not the moment. I can take it on notice, Councillor Lark, and get back to you, but not to my knowledge. No. Thank you, Mr. Sturton, Councillor Lark. Is it nothing add, further to add, Councillor Lark? No, my understanding was that the work permit was under council control, but I stand to be corrected in that regard. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Councillor Lang, did I see your hand up? Yep. I think the, um, thank you, Rochelle, for, for putting this motion forward urgently um, and all the points that were made by the, the other councillors. Um, I think that, uh, this is, with regard to the Earth Resources Regulator, uh, the rehabilitation bond uh, that was mentioned in the motion is of particular concern across the Shire with other extractive mining industry quarries because 
uh, an auditor, auditor general's report actually determined that the bonds held by the ERR are considerably lower than what they should be in order to ensure that the rehabilitation works are done undertaken to a standard. Uh, we're not talking a small figure here. The Auditor General report um, discussed, uh, referred to about $388 million of bonds being underestimated for rehabilitation works across Victoria. Uh, I think that given that um, our community is focused as Councillor Whelan also mentioned as a tourism uh, hotspot and um, recognised as a distinctive area landscape that we um, get some information quite soon about whether the estimates for a rehabilitation bond are actually going to be sufficient for ideally during the process of extractive mining and also um, at the end of the life of these mines, if they were to continue. Thank you, Councillor Lang. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this notice of motion? Councillor Bauer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I mean, again, thank uh, Councillor Holson for bringing this up as urgent business, I think it is. But I would like to know, even if we pass this bill, what is the uh, procedure to actually maintain the, the health of these trees before they are put back in? Because even though we pass it, what do we have? What are they going to do? Just put a water can over them? Or is there, is there a procedure for uh, maintaining the vegetation for the re rehabilitation process? Councillor Bauer, can I just clarify, is that an actual question to an uh, an officer or is that just yes. you questioning? No, no, it's a question to the officer because uh, it's one thing passing this, but I'd like to know what in, in the uh, permits are, are the requirements for them to maintain it. Thank you, Councillor Bauer. I'm, I'm guessing I'm going to drop Mr. Sturton in it. No, no, Miss Wastey's taken that one, Miss Wastey. Uh, to you, Mr. Mayor, uh, Councillor Bauer will need to take that one on notice. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wasty. Thank you, Councillor Bauer. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this notice of motion? No, no. Councillor Holstead, would you like to close or put it to a vote? Just quickly, I would like to thank councillors for their support on this urgent business and also just point out, um, I think Councillor Whelan mentioned uh, he was uh, specifically interested that I'd included liaising with the Bonnerong Land Council and I don't wish to take um, uh, take the glory for that one. Uh, Councillor Lang uh, suggested that that was a good thing to add in and um, I appreciate her offer to do that or to ask me to do that. Um, this to me just shows um, what a great council this is going to be that, you know, we're all working towards the same goal and it, it's exciting to think that, you know, we can bring something like this to council and have such strong support. Um, and I think that, it, you know, it just shows that, that we're, we're going to do some great work. So I really appreciate your support and I just put the motion to a vote. Thank you, Councillor Olstead. Before we put it to a vote, I just uh, acknowledge... Uh, Councillor Whelan mentioned uh, Mrs Tobin and the, the great work, her and many, mm. but uh, Mrs Tobin's close to uh, a lot of our hearts, especially mine, so uh, well done to her. So we put it to a vote. All in favour of the notice of motion as it reads. Councillor Tassari, Holstead, Lang, Rooks, Lasser, Bauer, Kent, Whelan and Lark. Carried. Great work. That brings us to the end of our very first meeting uh, as a, a new council. Uh, I congratulate everyone for, for working through what we have today. Um, I look forward to uh, continuing on. Just uh, council is monitoring the and implementing the COVID-19 pandemic response and restrictions set out by state and federal government. Council will be pausing community, will continue to pause community connections sessions at this time. The next council meeting will be held virtually on the 16th of December, 2020, commencing at one o'clock. It will be open to the public via live stream. Thank you for watching 
uh, our very first meeting as a new council. I hope you have enjoyed and uh, I look forward to seeing you all again on the 16th of December. And if I can just ask all councillors to just pause, we will continue to be live for a little bit of time uh, um, until we shut off. So if we could just sit quietly and still for a few seconds. <laughs>